Welcome to TNR Plus series, where I collaborate with special guests and often industry experts. My name is Tarmila Rajasingham. I'm a licensed realtor with EXP Realty Brokerage based in Toronto. And our channel is all about Toronto real estate, real estate investing, wealth mindset, and marketing. Subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell to get updates on new content. This video, I had the honor of sitting down with Shay Hellenbrand to talk about mindset and goal setting to elevate your brand. Shay is a real estate agent based in Arizona, two-time MLB All-Star, and an Emmy winner for his story and the founder of Against All Arts Foundation and much more. Shay has a passion for helping people rewrite their story and achieve their purpose. Now let's go check out my conversation with Shay. So hi Shay, thank you so much for joining me. I am super excited to have you and it's truly an honor. I am, I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm a big Blue Jays fan, so I love what you have in the background. Um, so before we get started into kind of diving into the topic for today, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I appreciate that. It seems to be uh, a lot of real estate agents in our space that I'm coming across is, is from the Toronto area. And that's super exciting because I was an all-star for the Blue Jays, the Jays in 2005. But uh, what I noticed when I was there is that it's more so a hockey town. It's all about the Maple Leafs and, and, the, and the Jays are in the back burner. But uh, it was a good experience. But uh, myself, I lived both my childhood dreams. And uh, I always wanted to play Major League Baseball and I wanted to own a zoo. So I became a two-time MLB All-Star. And uh, after playing baseball, I shifted into my second dream of owning a zoo. And I accumulated 300 farm and exotic animals. And uh, anything from camels, kangaroos, llamas, alpacas, monkeys, raccoons, everything out of the moon. I was kind of like Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. I loved animals more than I loved baseball. So what I had a vision of doing was, was rescuing and rehabilitating these animals with unconditional love. And then in return, put them in a petting zoo environment. And then I would have inner city to San Little Child Crisis kids come out and interact with those animals. And the connection of those two was just absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. I had story after story after story of transformation from that that that, that happened, superseded anything I ever did on the Major League Baseball field. So wow. after that, um, uh, I found my way a couple years after that into the real estate space. I started like buying, like even in the process when I bought my farm in the zoo, 38 acres, I was like, man, I kind of like this. You know, like I, I really cool about, you know, researching land and uh, uh, acquiring land. And I know you can create like major wealth through real estate. So I started purchasing it. But then uh, uh, recently, uh, my wife and I we were married five years ago. And uh, we started uh, doing investment in homes and stuff like that. She says, you know what? You should get your real estate license because uh, we're going to cut out on that commission and stuff like that. And yeah. the, the bottom line with our ROI uh, would be great. So I did that and jumped into that. And then been in real estate for three years. And uh, to, to, to be 100% transparent and honest with you, like uh, my passion is not really in the place of doing transactions. It's not really in the place. I don't want to really jump in. I'll do it, and I'm doing it. But I don't. I don't like researching homes. I don't like. Uh, I don't like jumping in the car and showing homes and uh, and uh, doing open house and stuff like that. But what I love to do is to help real estate agents, and like that's my lane with the mindset, uh, peak performance, and and all that stuff. So uh, my first brokerage I went to was KW and uh, Keller Williams, and they do those assessments in place to get you on board and see how you fit in and what needs and wants you need, needs you need to be able to you know have success or whatever. And I had the lowest score possible as a real estate agent. They're like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I had the highest score possible for a team leader mm -hmm. and, a, and a leader. So it's like, okay, uh, <laughs> this, this is exactly in line with what I'm doing. So now, uh, with EXP, Wolfpack, with uh, Mike Sherrard, you guys, is uh, absolutely amazing uh, being able to uh, co collaborate and help people around the world. Absolutely. You know, honestly, Shay, it's it's truly an honor on our end to have you in our group. We learned so much and I'm, I, I'm honored to see you on a weekly basis and to share ideas and knowledge and kind of learn from each other. And I wanted to ask you, when you talk about mindset and goal setting, how do you have a morning routine? How do you start the day off? I drive my wife completely nuts because I make the bed the same way every day. I take out the trash the same way every day. I mow my lawn the same day every day. Uh, and like everything, let me tell you what. Um, and so for some people, it doesn't work for them because people are wired differently. But for the vast majority, 
What I want to make very clear to everybody that's listening is that the uncluttered mind is systematic. We have two types of focus that we have. I say that it's a generalized focus for a specific focus. And the vast majority of people, and the reason why 97% of real estate agents don't last after the first year or two is because there's a generalized focus. Like we're just thrust out into a sea of real estate agents everywhere. It's like, how do you set yourself apart? And we have everything thrown at you from uh, lead generation, from marketing, from branding, and everything. It's like, so if you have generalized focus and generalized thoughts going through your mind consistently, what happens from there is that fear creeps in. That's just like a, like a survival technique. Fear creeps in, and the byproduct of that is no self confidence. Like it just it just gets thrown out the door. So you have to have yeah. processes in place yes. in order to enhance that uh, from from that generalized focus to the specific yeah. focus. And when you get to that specific focus, now you can start rocking and rolling and ingraining different habits and ingraining different techniques into that nervous system. Yeah. And, what's, and that's the only way from a generalized focus to a specific focus. It's the only way you can get past that fear. You can get past that failure and bust through those limited beliefs that we all have. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, when I get into, especially in Clubhouse conversation and in our own group, we always talk about putting that marketing strategy together or business planning. And I feel like that's why I want to talk to you is before you get to all of that, you need to be in the right mindset. And when you talk about mindset, and I know you, you were in a couple of a Clubhouse conversation with me, and I, I loved what you had to say. When you talk about figuring out your purpose, so how do you go about doing that? How do you find your purpose? So I was one of those guys that, that had to uh, go through um, some pretty dark spots in my life to find out and go through it. So after I left baseball, I went on a, like a 12 year deep dive of like personal development of like purpose and self discovery because like when you're at that high level of being on top of the world or being a peak performer and elite performer, um, you have a tendency to attach your identity to what you do. And, yeah. and that's the one thing that I see in the real estate space is because with these guys that are or guys or gals, these, these players in this game space, um, they get super successful at a pretty quick pace and all of a sudden all this money's coming in and everything's flowing and they just don't know who we are because this is a 24 seven business. If you want to rock and roll, it's not 40 hours a week. It's, it's 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And when you get into that and you delegate so much time to what you're doing, you have a tendency to be able to attach your identity to that and you live and ride and die with that. So each transaction or, or and you're just trying to get that edge because the competition is fierce, but, uh, it starts with your identity of who you are at the core. I always tell people to ask two people. I always ask people two questions. Who are you at the core? And then why are you doing what you're doing? Wow. Um, and so many people try to have success or try to make an impact in real estate to be able to feel a void inside because, like I said, you can make NFL money uh, in, in the real estate space. You don't need 20 years experience. You just need to know how the game is played. So uh, it's one of those places that are very, you know, it's, it's, it can be very dangerous. And I see it being dangerous for so many people because, as we know, the market's cyclical. And if you don't yeah. know how to work that market and if you don't know how to work yourself – uh, through those times, then you end up losing yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, we always spend so much time trying to figure out how to serve other people. We often forget to 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 kind of listen in and be self-aware of our energy that we're putting out to people. And in order to truly be in service to others and to help and understand people and to guide other people, we have to find love and a purpose within ourselves. And I love that. Is there like a technique you use or what kind of a, like, I know you seem like a very, you know, in your energy, you feel like a very powerful person and you feel like you, you've learned a lot and, you know, and I, I, I saw your story, you know, your Emmy winning story. And I, and it's, I'm not going to lie. It felt sad at one point, this guy, he had it all. Like, I don't get it. I will do anything. Like I, um, I'm not sure if you know this, Shay, I work and I still do. Uh, well, now it's closed right now, but I worked at the Rogers Center for over 12 season. And, you know, I didn't quite see you play, but I saw uh, Roy Halliday. Yeah. And I, you know, and I, I was an usher. I wasn't anything special, but I used to sit at the bottom of different section. And I used to be like, wow, what I would do to be on the other side of the field, you know, and you had that. And, but I felt, and then you said you felt empty and like, how, 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 why? And how do you go and how did you get out of that and to feel so fulfilled now? Yeah, so it's, it's a great question. And uh, I have like a 
five tool player, five tool agent profile system that I send guys through or gals, people through. And, and the first step is identity. It's like, how, how do you do it? What, what is the story that you're telling yourself right now? Mm. And so many people lose sight of that. And those thoughts that go through your mind, we have 70,000 thoughts that go through our mind on a daily basis. 70% of those are negative. So you're talking about 60,000, 48,000 thoughts that are negative. So how do you, how do you navigate that space? How do you understand that? So you don't attach your identity to that. Yeah. So if myself, um, uh, I was paying, playing the pain driven game and I was trying to have so much success to fill a void, a void inside myself because of the story I told myself the whole, my whole life of I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, mm-hmm. and my dad doesn't love me. That was just, wow. it's a simple, uh, and it's a really non, it's a, it's a nonsense story, but it was my truth. Yeah. So the first question I want to ask everybody that's watching this or listening to this is that, what's the story that you tell yourself every day? What's the story you wake up with? What's the story you go to bed with? Not how you navigate throughout the day, because that, that when we navigate throughout the day, we get our systems and processes and routines and, and, and habits in place. But, but how are you inside? How are you fulfilled? Because Oprah said it best, and I love this quote. She says, you're in charge of filling yourself up and keeping yourself full. No one else. Not a coach, no. not a mentor, not your spouse, not your parents, not your brother or sister. You are. But how do you know how to fill yourself up if you don't know who you are? So at the core, we try to figure out who are you at the core? I always thought I was a major league baseball player who yeah. made millions of dollars. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I was Shea Hillenbrand that played baseball. So the first thing we got to sit down and say, okay, what's the story I'm telling myself? Is that story uh, more likely propelling me towards my goals? Or is that story holding me back? Because we're going to fail. We're going to get challenges and we're going to get world bumps. We're going to get knocked down. We're going to do uh, uh, cold calls. We're going to do major and we're going to be hung up on. We're going to be, and how are you perceiving that? How are you working that? You're going to get leads in that are dead leads. You call it pizza, pizza leads. You know what I mean? So it's <laughs> yes. like, that's going to, how are you navigating that? Are you like, yes. oh, this is stupid. I, I should be doing real estate. How do you, how do you work that and refine that? Because so many people, when they get to that world bump, when I tell you you have a 3% chance of having success in real estate, what gets me right now is that we have a 3% chance of having success. 97% of people fail in this space. They're just like, not done. Yeah. But what happens is when I say you have a 3% chance, not you, but you in general, have a 3% chance of having success, you automatically go to your mind and say, I have a 97% chance I'm not going to do it. So right there, that thought process reconfirms, re-ingrains, re-embeds those limited beliefs that have been given to us throughout our life with experiences, whether it's environment or interactions with other people. But what that means and how I got to the top is that I was 1% of the 1% in the world. What that means is that whenever I got to a road bump, whenever I got knocked down, whenever I had a failure, whenever I just had everything fall apart, what it means is that 3% will just keep going. Yeah. 97% of people will give up. So you have to switch that mindset from that failure has to refine me, not define me. And this happens yeah. so much with so many realtors is that failure uh, defines who they are yeah. rather than mastering that crap, rather than making adjustment, rather coming in and, and doing what you need to do to get that next one and keep going. But it all revolves around what will push you through that, guys, is your why. Why am I doing this? Is it to impact humanity? Is it to take care of my family? Is it to take care of my community? Wow. Is it to give back at a bigger space? If it's to make you get a car, or like I got a real estate agent in my neighborhood here. I live in a great, he, he's driving a Lamborghini. Like he's trying to fill a void with this Lamborghini. And I know him and I'm trying to tell him like, dude, you are setting yourself up for failure. You're empty inside, dude. And, and, yeah. and until you go through it, you know, whether, you know, there's a lot of mindset coaches out there, or, but until you go through it and understand that pain, it's, it's, it's really crazy to understand. No, I love it. Wow. You're, you're so awesome. You're by even just you speaking from your story or what you've gone through, you're, you're going to change people's lives the way they see about themselves. And the, and the crazy part is, so when you talk about failure, I wanted to ask you, how do you keep yourself motivated um, to pushing yourself for, you know, greatness or whatever that you're, you're moving towards. Like, how do you keep yourself motivated? In particularly when you are caught up in this pattern, right? When things around you, let's say you try to push yourself. And especially us as real estate agents, we have so many 
different techniques and lead gen tools that we're trying to to try and create and then we and we keep hitting these roadblocks so how do you keep yourself motivated and to tell and i know you talked about telling your story but um is there any other techniques you use to keep yourself kind of pushing for that greatness so when i would separate myself from other people that i played with at baseball ranks and going up and then now in the real estate space or wherever we're at is that you have to have a clear target before you go into it, right? Like I was saying last night in Clubhouse, real estate's a space to where you just have to have a GED, and like you have to have a diploma, and you have to have a clean record, pay $1,000, take 90 hours of classes, and you can get your license and go out there and make $100,000 in your first year. Like what places can you do that? There's not many other places other than like online uh, businesses to, to do that. So you have to have a clear target to hit. That's step number one. You, what, what, what are my goals? What am I trying to achieve? What am I setting out to do? If I'm a new agent, what do I, what do I want to do this year? Do I want to do one transaction a month? Because uh, everybody always talks about when they start in real estate, I want to do 100000 this year. <laughs> if you just break it down, because real estate's a numbers game. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. A numbers game, period. But the people, most real estate agents won't put the work and effort in to accomplish those numbers because they don't believe in themselves. So in order for you to believe in yourself, that's the number one thing. You have to believe that you can achieve, right? So when you get in this space, why am I in real estate? Is it to make a, a quick buck? Is it to make $100,000 and make, make good money so that I can pay my bills or whatever? That, that, that's too minimal. That's not going to sustain you to have success in this space. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this to create generational wealth. I wanna, I'm in real estate right now because I want to revolutionize the game. I want people to understand it's not about the systems. It's not about legion. It's not about marketing. It's not about, you have to understand it's the mindset and you have to understand that it's a heart set and you have to understand like, like I'm here to make an impact. And what drives me nuts is everybody says, I'm in real estate because I like helping people. No, you don't. You don't know how to help yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to be true, you don't know even how to help yourself. So you have to understand your why. You have to understand why you jumped into this game. And if you don't have a solid foundation with that, we can reset that. We can, we can get people to go deeper with that why to push you through those failures to keep you going and keep the momentum going because like I said, you're going to have a door slammed on you. You're going to have a fall knocked off on you. And you're going to have leads. Like the worst thing is like, dude, I can't cut it out to do an open house and people sign into my open house and give me fake phone numbers. Like really do? Like I'm a grown yeah. man. Like, like, like how do you navigate that space? Yeah. How do you navigate a space when you have a friend that uses another realtor over you? How do you yeah. navigate the space of, of competition, taking this and doing that? Because it's a pretty cutthroat business. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in this space that don't really know who they are and don't understand what it's like to have success. Have a clear target. What does that mean? My target needs to be clear of what I'm trying to get, okay? If I wanna do a certain amount of uh, deals a year, or if I wanna do a certain amount of GCI a year, if I wanted to have a certain amount of families or, or whatever it is, that bigger goal, like for me, I wanted to play Major League Baseball, but I had to focus on where I was right there. So many people get too far ahead of the game of where they're at. And when you get too far ahead, we're not trained for that. So what we do, I can't do this, I don't know what to do. So we all start out at level one. And then once we master level one, what's level one? Understanding how to do marketing, understanding how to rock, uh, uh, like, like we're talking about Mike Schwartz stuff, right? Yeah. So understand how to rock YouTube videos, understanding how to regenerate, understanding how to set up KD Core. Hopefully I can have somebody help me set up KD Core. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then understanding how to have a, a follow-up system, yeah. like the foundations. I think that's the most powerful thing other than not, not understanding how to do the transaction and not how to do a, a, an open house. How do we get these things in place, the basic understanding? That's level one. We don't yeah. think about, oh, I gotta go sell this house and do this house and put this up. Like I'm on level one. And once I master level one, I wanna get to level 10. What's level 10? Level 10's, man, shoot the moon. I wanna do a million dollars this year or whatever it is. Like that's level 10. But I have to focus on that. I have to love like that in my head, but I have to focus more on that, level one. And then once I get to level one, towards I get that rock and roll, what's level two? Okay, level two is, okay, now I'm gonna learn how to jump on open houses because I can generate and work 50 deals a year just by doing open houses. So what's that mean? It's not going up there and doing an open house. What that means is how do I research it? Jump on YouTube, check out, you know, follow YouTube with Tim Ferry or, or all these other guys, all these other guys out there that are rock. You can just Google it. Or you can just do a search in YouTube. How do I rock, how do I rock a, an open house? 
Okay, and then after I do that, uh, you know, then you, you know what I mean? You go through those steps and processes of where you are. We get so far ahead of ourselves, and then all these external pressures and all these external influences, like, I got to pay my bills. I got to do this. All this stuff's coming now. I'm gonna be spending all this money on this stuff. I'm spending all this time, and nothing's happening. And that's what it is. You got to go from level one, level two, level three, level four, and then with, with the big goal inside of level two, but sometimes you might be on level four and you might get knocked down and have to go back to level three, so you stay right there. When you get knocked down and have a failure or a setback or whatever, I mean, you could be rocking it and, and, and as a realtor right now and you could get COVID. That's going to set you back. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do stuff. So when I go back to level three, I, when I go back to level three, I don't say, man, I suck. I'm no good. I'm not going to do it. No. You don't focus on the specific focus on level three, and you stay there. And then maybe once you rock level three, you can jump to level five because you've already been on level four. But what happens is people try to go from level one, level two, to level four, to level seven, and it doesn't work because you're not prepared. And then when you're not prepared for something, your mind tells you, dude, you can't do this to protect you. Don't be out there. Don't do that. you got to go through each step and each process and each level and grow and grow and grow. But that why is going to push you? Why are you doing what you're doing? Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about this a lot with Mike Sherrard. And, I, and that's why all the people and some of my teammates that I'm working with, um, agents were, I'm always coaching them. And we, the moment I meet with them, they're all like, okay, tell me all of the lead gen ideas. Tell me all about marketing. And I'm like, okay, okay, hold on a second. Before we get to all the strategies, there's a reason why people like Mike Sherrard got to where he is. He, the, he, there was a process where he was learning. It was, it was all about putting in the time to learn and to figure out what's working for him, what isn't working for him, and that planning process and to figure out who you are and how you fit into this larger, larger perspective of a game. And but also this, there's a process to everything, right? And and often, especially with us, you are because you're not part of our, you know, you're self-employed, you're an entrepreneur, and people don't often realize is that this is where you are kind of driving your business. So having a very clear understanding of who you are is 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 instrumental to your success. And I, so wait, so talk, let's talk about you, Shay. So um, before we end off, um, where are you at? What, what, what's your next, what's, what's your next five months your year look like? Um, and I know that you're on our team, so I'm looking forward to seeing all the stuff, cool things you're going to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for, thank you for asking that yeah. and sharing that. Um, I'm one of those guys, I've been there and I've done it, accomplished my dreams, and I'm at that phase of my life. I'm 45 years old, and I'm at that phase from success to significance. So um, I, I have a difficult time doing something without purpose. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to make an impact in people's lives and help them accomplish their dreams and goals. So what that is, is like, like I want to get away from the uh, daily works and transactions of me being a real estate agent and to be a coach, being a person that could help uh, help uh, team members, help fellow members, and help people on my team that would bring in the EXP. So uh, EXP has been the best thing for myself because – as you know, I, play, I played in six different markets. I played in, the Red, in Boston, I played in Toronto, I played in LA, I played in Anaheim, and I played in San Francisco and Arizona. So yeah. I plan on going to the route of trying to uh, trying to expose, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, other realtors, uh, real estate agents around the world. And I, I'm really uh, connected in Mexico too because I have a baseball academy down there. Um, so it exposed real estate agents to that to help them generate their wealth, to help people like you. Uh, what are your goals and your dreams? Like, I will help guide you through that process because it's, like I said, it's so much deeper than just uh, doing the technical stuff. Anybody can train their skill set within the industry. Anybody can rock uh, all the things that we need to do in the real estate space. But if you don't understand how to work on yourself as a person and how to get yourself uh, growing as well with that level one, two, three, four, five with yourself going with what you're doing, um, you might end up in a space like me, which I hope everybody will do, is because I was one breath away from losing my life. Yeah. So like like that's my slogan. Like you're one breath away from a breakthrough. You're one breath breath away from getting that thing that you always wanted to get. So you got to stick at it. You never know because a breakthrough happens in a moment in time. It doesn't take a week. Doesn't take a year. Doesn't take. A, it's an understanding of something that clicks inside you where you align your identity, your gifts, your talents with your mind, and your spirit drives that. And then going from there to make an impact and discovering like why you are here. So many people in the real estate space that that think that great. That's their end all 
all be all, but that could be a vehicle to understand a greater version of themselves. So I'm going to be that guy that's uh, in there working on the mindset when they're recruiting and helping people uh, navigate the spaces. All right. So like if we, we have a trouble navigating a, an open house, we have a trouble navigating uh, a lead generation. Like, okay. How you interact in that? How you present yourself? How you walk in, into a room? Like, like you, and that's what I love about you. Like when you and I go into a clubhouse room, there's an energy shift. I don't care what you say. Yeah. So a lot of people think that when they go into a room, like Shay Hillary, I thought when I was playing for the Jays, when I was playing for the Diamondbacks or whatever, I thought when I walked in the room that I was the baddest guy there because, like, the, the best guy there because I had ego and pride and look at me, I'm a celebrity. Yeah. I didn't turn one head. But now I disattach from that. I know who I am. I'm connected with that. I understand my purpose. I have clarity what I'm trying to achieve. So when I walk into a clubhouse room, I'm just sitting there waiting, like, please pass me the mic because I'm going to shift the energy in this room. So I want to, I want, I want game changers. I want life changers. I want, I want to, to teach people how to shift energies and play. That's how you set yourself apart in this space in real estate. I love it. And I love that being a part of the Wolfpack and EXP, we're really redefining the industry. There's so many agents that I talk to here, even in Toronto, that are, that are, you know, they're surprised that there's a model like the way that we have, where there are actually people going out of their way to work with each other, collaborate with each other. I, you have no idea. There are agents, and I would have never thought that the same, you know, that's why I love about mindset and goal setting and strategy building. It doesn't matter where you are. It's the, 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 those foundational ideologies don't really change, you know, and, and you can, that's why I love jumping into conversations with you because those are things that are kind of the backbone of your business and it drives it's you everything. and anything and everything you do. And it's not just business. It's your brand. Your brand revolves around you. If you want to create a unique brand, a branded message, it comes from your identity of who you are, right? So what that comes from is your story. What's your story? Well, how were you raised when you were a kid? With those experiences that you went through as a kid, whether it's your father or a mother or, or whomever that means, siblings, like, like when you go into an experience, the two things that will dictate our belief system is how you interpret that experience and communicate that experience to yourself. So myself, when I got into a situation with my father, my father was, you know, it was like a generation of parents so he'd kind of yell and I, and I couldn't handle it. And how I interpret is that, oh my gosh, dude, I, I'm, I'm horrible. And then the thing is, oh, my dad doesn't love me. So mm -hmm. how you interpret and communicate experiences will dictate how you navigate future experiences. And for a lot of people, that's formed in their adolescence. So I'm that guy that will go there with you in those, those tough spaces inside, and I'll hold your hand, and I'll guide you through the process. And say, Until we uncover this and understand this, you can't tap into your fullest potential. And that's the biggest chokehold on so many people because they get to the 60% uh, of their potential threshold, and these limited beliefs and these stories and all this stuff that they tell themselves – they're going to continue a basis that derived mostly from their childhood, okay, is what keeps them there. So once we bust through those, man, the, the, the human mind, the, the potential is unlimited. It's insane. They created the computer, for crying out loud. It's 200,000 times more powerful than a computer. It's insane what we can do, but so many people allow that to hold them back. But the people that are successful in this space push through that and understand that. So if you want to talk about branding, you want to create a unique brand, you want to know how to navigate with people, like I'm telling you, I say it in every club, so you have to understand who you are. It's in your story. That's how you're going to connect with people. People want to think, okay, you're too tight, to be all-star. It's cool to work with you. No, that's that, 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 those, those shiny things only last. If I don't bring it, and if I don't have authenticity and transparency and vulnerability, that's where the power comes from. That's where it's at because so many people are so afraid to allow themselves to go there because they don't understand why that pain has been driven or that story has led them to where they are. What's the story you're telling yourself? That's the key we have to ask yourself. That's where branding comes from. It's not about a logo. It's not about the, the, the uh, all these other things that we talk about in branding. The branding, unique branding, because we have to be unique, man. You have to be unique in this space, right? Absolutely. So, my thought was, is like, okay, how do we do something unique? How do I help you? And when you're talking about, you talk to realtors or agents in the Toronto area and you expose EXP to them, maybe you could say, hey, man, like, I can get you an autograph or something from Shea Hillebrand if you come on board with your yeah. university. You know what I mean? It's like, 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 I don't know, that might help you or whatever. Yeah. That's kind of unique. But, but it's like, how can we partner together to make the, for, for the greater good of, of us together as a team? So it's like, thinking outside the box. So my thing is, is like, how do you know how to brand yourself, 
How do you know how much money you want? And how do you know what you want if you don't know who you are? That's all I yeah, say. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. You're so amazing. And I, um, you know, for those that wants to get in touch with Shay, please comment below and I'll definitely put you in touch with him. And um, I'll definitely make sure to add your links in my description. And what an honor to have you. And honestly, I think I'm going to take you on all my marketing consultation calls. You're so good. And you're, and <laughs> Let's I, love do it. <laughs> I know this is, this is really amazing. And I uh, thank you so much for spending time with me and to talk about such a really important topic. And I, let Let's start doing this more often and I think let's talk about let's really diving into really that training that you do with different age and I think there there is something here and I think that um, I think let's start talking about this more often and I'm gonna definitely be in touch with you about it and more getting into really the practice of things the more practicality of putting some of the things you know that five five point program that you have it's like you know thinking about it it's one thing and how do you now take action and how do you get to get, get to there so let's let's be in touch and so thank you everyone for watching and i had a pleasure of sitting down with shay and um yeah let's let's keep this going and please subscribe to our channel hit the like button and hit the notification bell to get updates on new content